This week of the Road Testament, Matt Farah and I discussed 12 cylinder cars. Can a used 12 cylinder be as good as, or maybe a better value than a really good used four cylinder? I have no idea. Farah, you're gonna tell us. Yeah. This week. Indian food. <laughs> Probably the most complex food to cook in terms of the sheer number of ingredients. Not yeah. as complex as hanging out with me after I eat it. <laughs> oh. My body rich with faraway spices. <laughs> Where do you follow our show? I don't know. <laughs> at Drive on Twitter. Facebook.com slash Drive TV and follow me at The Smoking Tire on Twitter. V12s. Can a V12 used possibly be a better value than a really great used four-cylinder? Uh, possibly, but it depends on which V12, right. of course. You own a V... I've never owned a V12. You own one. What is yeah. it? It is an Aston Martin Vanquish. Okay, besides the fact that it looks amazing... It looks amazing. Explain to me the aura and majesty and the why V12... Like, well, was it Jeremy Clarkson who said everyone should own a V12 supercar? Who said that? Someone said at some point everyone should own a V12 car. And I, I see where they're coming from because the 12-cylinder engine is, is beautiful in the way it revs. It's perfectly smooth. It's a balanced engine. So there's, you get basically no vibration whatsoever from the engine, but you get this amazing sound that is very unique. It does, they don't sound like anything else. It, it's it's an e, this even hum, but it's just like... Bruh. They also cost... 40 per, to 50% more <laughs> yes. than the eight-cylinder version of any car. Exactly. Yeah. And in my life, I have never, ever heard of any V12 car ever being reliable over time. My car, the engine itself is very reliable. It has never, ever broken in any way. Because Ford probably owned yeah. Aston at the time. And yeah, and it's literally two Ford V6s stuck together at the crank. So it's, it's two three-liter... Ford Duratec V6s, which make a 6-liter V12. All right, so we've got a list of really great used four-cylinder cars, and some not so and, great, and, and some interesting, a, and some interesting used V12s, which are hilariously cheap. Yeah. And we're going to discuss why and which one might even possibly be a good value. There, there are some gems in there, like this right here. So this is the car that came before my car. This is the DB7 Vantage. So when this car first came out, it had a supercharged six-cylinder engine in it, which was not a terrible engine, but it only made like 330 horsepower. Then in uh, the uh, early 2000s, the Vantage model, they put the, the first version of the V12 I have in it, so the six-liter V12. In this car, it made 420 horsepower. And you can pick these up with relatively low mileage and good shape for about 40,000 bucks. Reliability in this car. Um, <laughs> the, uh, well, if, if I recall correctly, this was the era of the really crap interior. Not not as crap as you think. This is the area where the uh, the era where the interior looked almost identical to a Jaguar XK. I mean, it this t to me seems like the dark times of no, er, middle 90s was absolutely, okay. l l before this car, the last Astons before this car, the boxy Virage I like stuff. I like the boxy Virage. I like them in a weird way. I like the earlier versions, but, but, but when this, I look these at this are car, nice. You know what I see? I see a newer Aston that's been in a fire and slightly melted. <laughs> it just seems shapeless to me. Well, Aston's and design structure, the way, their philosophies, um, um, rules of thirds, like the height of this window versus its relationship to the ground, the length of the greenhouse versus, the, they have all these formulas. So that's sort of why all at modern Astons kind of look the same is because of that. But as far as a exotic car, 12 cylinder car, you know, compared to, believe it or not, compared to like a Ferrari 575 or something, this is rather cheap to maintain and, and own. Interesting. It's, but it's just the little bits. Like when this my parking brake cable broke on my car, it was 2,500 bucks. Of course. So. I, you know something? I don't care if this is a good value. This, this just. It doesn't I, do I don't, it for I, you? I, I'm not too. So I, I think it's a good value in, for, in terms of 12 cylinders. The next but, car. Before we go on, by the way, that uh, last car, that Aston, when's the last time you saw one of those on the road? You recently, never, I saw one recently. I, you never see them because they're not, <laughs> just not sexy. This car, this car has its place in my heart because in 2000, 
four. Yeah. I drove one on a rally. It was a CL600, 2004 CL600. That one year they did a twin turbo yeah. option. And it was unbelievably quick. And the power, it was, it was an amazing car. Well, and this is the 65. This one's is, even faster. So this car was about 190 grand new. <laughs> it made, this is 600 horsepower and 738 pound feet of torque. The one I drove did over 200 miles an hour. Yeah, the, oh, this one will, will go as a 200 mile an hour car legitimately. And it has all kind of neat stuff like air suspension and, and Mercedes, uh, you know, it's got good seats in it. Uh, but the pro- these things. You could get one of these for 20 grand. This the the 65 is probably 30 for the the nicest one you can find. The problem with these, of course, is out of warranty maintenance is terrifying on a car like this. And people actually email me a lot and say, Matt, should, should I, I buy this 65? Should I, should I buy this car? I can get all this horsepower for no money. I can be driving a Mercedes. God forbid anything breaks on one of these. If you go on Lincoln Boulevard uh, in L.A. Every, you look, every you dealership, yeah. these are lined up. Yeah. Yeah, for, I mean, literally, it's like 21995. Yeah. 23995. <laughs> it's, I mean, you, know, you can't give these cars away because if it breaks, you might as well just throw it away. If, it, if something, you know, if, if, if a turbo goes on this car, it's totaled. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, if the air suspension goes, it's totaled. And I would love to, I, I also love the look of this particular car. Oh, it's a great and for car. 20 grand, even for 30 grand, I mean. It's, yeah. But I don't think it's a And they good. put this engine in the sedan, the S-Class, in this, and in the SL. And they're all stupid cheap. But they're, you know something? You never see these actually driving around under their own power. You see, see them the, on used car lots. Like, all on used stuff. car lots yeah. on rims yeah. with, yeah. A, with something ending in yeah. 995 and, on and, and it's like this or a, a, a row of Range Rovers. Yeah, all on rims, of course. All right. So instead of spending you know thirty to $40,000 on one of these, you could, Vitae, Get this four cylinder supercharged Lotus Exige S260. 35? Probably about 40 to 45 for a used one, which is a lot for a four cylinder car with basically no interior, but Toyota engine bulletproof. bulletproof. There's there's nothing in this car to break, even though it is British. They were actually pretty reliable. I was kind of hoping we'd come up with a four-cylinder car that actually was comfortable in the way that 12-cylinder <laughs> cars are. Yeah. But I guess. The, I mean, I'm sure this is a great but it's car. It's hard to find. I mean, we were trying to find four-cylinder. It is hard to find yeah. expensive four-cylinder cars. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and, and obviously a Lotus Exige S260 is not a Mercedes or an Aston Martin. But if you want a Actually, but it's more quick exclusive. sports car. Nobody, ha- nobody has one. They're, they're, they're relatively rare. And they're they fun will to last. drive. They will last. And, uh, you know, maintenance is not so bad on them, actually. Cool, but I, I, it's, not, it's not for me. Not my style, me but, but I'm not buying a V12 twin turbo Mercedes. <laughs> I really want seven it. years old either. What's next? What do we got next here? All right, this, now you're talking. Because I think the 8 Series is the last awesomely beautiful aggro shark nose yeah. BMW design language up the wazoo. I, I own an 88 M6, which never runs, even though it's not, <laughs> even though it's a six-cylinder. But uh, this thing, what I, I remember, in, you know, in college, you know, these things go around, and I wanted one. So I, I bad. love these cars. Like, so a guy cool. I know has an 850 CSI with a stick, and it is really brilliant. Wow. And it, it, his is the the nicest one I've ever seen, and it's probably you know a twenty-five or thirty thousand dollar car. But you can get these things. Cheap, cheap. Actually, I, I saw one for about $8,000. Yeah, I mean, but what yeah. is lurking under the hood, you know? Well, that, it's, what is it, 360-ish horsepower V12, I believe? You know, Maybe 380. The thing is, of course, if you're going to look at 12-cylinder engines from German manufacturers, yeah. as unreliable as Mercedes engines are, yeah. it is a universal fact. I mean, if you don't believe in... Newtonian theory of gravity. <laughs> you have not owned a yeah. BMW 12 cylinder <laughs> car yeah. and, and, and seen the depreciation. It, literally, the car lo- drops an inch as soon as you drive, yeah. you drive it off the lot. It's I mean, they're I, really bad, but these are great cars. And for ten thousand dollars, I would you know you buy one, and you put an LS motor <laughs> in it, and call it a day. Actually, you know something that's a great idea. Yeah, an LS. You know, if it fits a V12, it'll fit an LS motor, and you will have a sweet looking BMW that so actually cool. runs. Uh, you know, something for under 10, actually, this might be an okay buy. Yeah, yeah. it's be cheap. And then yeah. we have another cheapie, this this guy. 
<laughs> you know what's funny about the uh, the, the S, Sacco design? The S six hundred. These things were the the tank tanks. You know, well, the, looking, but the real tank tanks were the, was the predecessor to this. Oh yeah, like the one, like the coming to America ones. Right, but th they didn't yeah. make a twelve of that, did they? They did not. But, there was a V eight was the biggest you get. This one you could get the twelve, and there was uh, also about three hundred and sixty horsepower. And uh, you know what's funny is... Uh, you never see these rolling around, ever. No. The only one that I ever see, I have a friend who house sits for Madonna, and she <laughs> has one. Still? Still has one, and still... 12 is driven, Yes. It is a 600, and she still gets driven around in it. Can you imagine what the, like, like the dealer-supplied... <laughs> fourth party extended maintenance <laughs> plan must be on this thing. It must be more than the lease payments for a 14 month lease. Yeah, these are <laughs> these mean, are so stupid cheap. I mean, six grand, yeah. five grand you're buying one of these things for. Someone actually I think brought one to a lemons race recently because it was like unsellable. Uh, you know, I know it, it was a it was a guy who actually brought a SL, I think. And they they docked him like three thousand penalty laps. Oh, the long it was a long wheel yeah. base, the yeah. SEL. Yeah, yeah, yeah the so long they gave wheel, him like yeah. three thousand penalty yeah, yeah. laps. But if you think about it, actually, for the there should given the cost of these cars, there should be like a, above lemons, like a, a a race series just for twelve cylinder cars <laughs> under 12. ten grand. <laughs> because clearly there's a bunch of them. And, and yeah, yeah. And they just they need to set up dealerships on the side of the racetrack and do it. But these things are, uh, I wouldn't this want might to be, be anywhere near well, this This might be a better value than the 8 Series, although the 8 Series is sexy. No, because the 8 Series has some collector value yeah, a little this has, bit. This has, this has none. none. This is like, this was a, this is now a taxi cab in the Sudan. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, of course, the coupe version. This was the really the worst <laughs> of the Mercedes two-doors ever. It's, and in the V12, you had to be like a Full, like masochist, like it's down blind, like you it's just Russian you yourself, gangster. The worst. So, yeah. yeah, I don't care what, if this was uh, for two thousand bucks, I wouldn't drive it. Yeah, but the next car is, of course, your other option: four cylinder. You could spend a lot more money <laughs> on a used Fisker Karma. Is Equally this masochistic. Is this the most expensive four cylinder car ever sold? Well, I, I believe this to be the most expensive four cylinder car ever sold. Now, I know it's a hybrid and it's electric drive it's four and cylinder. four cylinder, but it is a four cylinder engine under there and new 110 grand. We're finding them used on eBay for 75 to 90 thousand dollars but I mean I love the looks of this car we've discussed it many times but you have to you also have to hate yourself to own one of these because if they're not catching on fire right. or, or breaking they're they're they just this I'm car, gonna say they're not very good in five years <laughs> if Fisker's Fisker still in business in five years and I don't, don't think they will be but if whatever happens you could pick up a Fisker in a couple of years for under 20 say totally and, and throw in a Corvette motor like totally. somebody did yeah, you have the best sedan of all time. Yeah, an yeah. LS9 with a manual transmission in this car, you are winning at life. You know something? I bet you there are some salvage Fiskers after Hurricane Sandy. Yeah. You could pick one up for like, say, a, 10. Yeah, and, a, just the body. Yeah, just the body, and you could have the greatest sedan of all time. Yeah. Yeah. We should, can, we, can we go down there and look? We actually should. Are they down there? Actually, let's go down there and we should, we look. We should find out. I don't know, but let's go back to 12-cylinder beater cars with... <laughs> oof. Well, this is, I mean, you know, uh, obviously the transporter car. Yeah, the BMW 750. Well, he had a 740, didn't he? Because yeah. he, he had a manual transmission. Well, it, it was a BS because he, had, he was like shifting. And it was like totally <laughs> nonsense. Fast and furious This is shipping. really the best looking, I think, 7 Series. I liked it with the, uh, the James Bond wheels when it had the sport package. Yeah, that was the really The Bond cool. wheels were good. That was really cool. My, fa uh, my, uh, my friend's father had one of these, and I remember when he bought it, and I think it was a 97 or 98, he brought it home and was bragging that there were more computers in this car than in the space shuttle. Which, when you, the car is brand new, sounds like a very good thing. Yeah. Now, now all those computers are twenty years old, and that prospect sounds well, this, unbelievably this scary. Car, this one was famous for having the dash uh, with the like little square, like uh, like like really dim LEDs. Yeah. And they always die. The dash clusters over time are just useless. But unlike a lot of the other cars we're talking about, I see a ton of these yeah. still running. Yeah, I but do. they're 740s. Yeah. They're not 750s. They're not 750s. I don't see, ever see 750s. It seems like BMW, obviously, I mean, they don't sell nearly as many 7 Series as Mercedes sells S-Classes. Right. But it seems like the differential with BMW 12 cylinders versus the 8, is it even greater than Mercedes differential? 
I think Mercedes sells more V12s than BMW. But do you think does, the, yeah. the 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 cost to upgrade to a 12 is was it? It's massive. It's massive. It's it's not as big in a Mercedes because an S600 is like 130 grand, but an S500 is like a, a hundred flat or so. In, in a in a in BMW like an, a 750 or uh, in this case it would have been a 740 was like. 65 or 70 grand, and the 750 was like 120. So I, I love this car. Stupid expensive. But I would not buy the 750. I'd get the 740 no. if I could. Seven but th these cars, the set, you get a 750 in this generation for about eight to twelve thousand dollars. That's on the high end. Yeah, eight grand. Eight Actually, grand will get you the world's for nicest. Six to seven. It's probably a good buy. Good, good beater car. Very cool. I, I could see it at six to seven, but again, you know, with the separate ECUs for each side of the motor, yeah. you know, one thing goes bad in this car and it's total. It's literally a throwaway But it car. was the second, it was the last generation seven series before everything went modular computerized. Like yeah. the E39 was the last five series yeah. before everything went modular. And I actually, I have a lot of faith in BMWs from the late 90s that I don't have today. Uh, yeah, my like, dad has a new 750 and it is terrible. Yeah, well. Yeah, at least it's not a V12. What do we got next? And then, of course, uh, this, this. You couldn't uh, give me this car. The, the 2003 <laughs> uh, BMW 760 and This is cheaper V12. than the prior generation 12 used, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, I've seen this, this for like this six. This actual car was on eBay right now. 2003, 60,000 miles, 18 grand, which is just over 10% of its original price eight years ago. You have Nine to be, I mean, out of your mind to get this car new, used, warranty. Uh, to, you know, the, they are the nuts. biggest waste of money. They're a, they're not that fast for seven. They don't, they don't look any different. I mean, look at this car. Other horribly, than a, horribly ugly. Horribly ugly. Other than the bad, you know, the the eye drive and stuff. This is a straight up no buy, no give, no anything. Or you could get that. You, know. you are the ex. We have the expert. That is a classy move. I'm gonna say that I know it's insane to include this on this list, but I've seen a mint condition DS for about forty thousand dollars. Really? Yeah. And you know something? These things, granted, the hydropneumatic suspension, braking, and steering system is a little funky. No wait, did this have? This was a four-cylinder car. Yeah, but I, th I thought. But yours, your SM has a, a six. But this but is this a four. Is four. Okay, okay. But the thing about this car is that if you can. It had a simpler hydropneumatic system than the SM because okay. it was an earlier system. And if you can get one in good condition, this is an amazing car, super sexy. And they ride really. And I've driven yours. They ride amazing. I mean, this is a. It's a. Everyone's going to tell me I'm an idiot for including this car on this list, but I don't care. I love I'd this rather car. have a Citroen DS than a BMW 760 from 2000. Well, you can have one of these rusted and kind of running for about four thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. And or or a, a, a totally decent one like this one right here, which looks clean, not Probably perfect. Probably twenty-five to thirty. Okay, so that or an 03 760. So no question. But this or an eight fifty. Ooh. This. I, I, st I, I still I'm still taking this. I think I might take the eight fifty. Really? Because the eight fifty only one thing can go wrong is the engine. So throw, <laughs> throw the car away. Yeah. With this, any, anything goes wrong. I mean, it's you, can, you get yeah. three eight fifties. Yeah. Next. Is that the last of our list? That's the game, isn't it? Follow us on draw on Twitter at Drive. Follow us on Facebook. There we go. Drive, but wait, Facebook. what did we learn here today? Oh, we have to come to some sort of a conclusion, don't we? Are four cylinder cars better than twelve cylinder cars? I mean, I think the answer is pretty obvious. Yes. Well, actually, to be clear, if you want to own the magic of a twelve cylinder car, you kind of have to do it soon because twelve cylinder cars, there are not going to be many of them around in ten years. Probably not. And nope. there's certainly not going to be any cheap ones. You know something? We completely forgot the greatest 12-cylinder car you can buy. We a totally Ferrari, forgot. A Ferrari 550? A Volkswagen Phaeton. Oh, we the picture. There should have been a picture there. We totally forgot to discuss the Phaeton. We missed it. The, Fa the Phaeton had two VR6 motors. Connect. Is that correct? It's two VR6s to make a W12. So it's not a V12. Okay. Which but, is the basis for the Bentley GT engine. But the Phaeton was meant to be a competitor with the S-Class, the yeah. A8, the 7 Series. And it was in all respects except the badge. And in it's fact, it was better. really cool looking. And you could pick one up now for about... What? Eight? 15 will get you a 12 cylinder one. 8 to 10 will get you a V8. And I bet you that is the best value 12 cylinder car Probably, you can buy today. because I bet you that Volkswagen dealerships would be very happy to see you come <laughs> in, in that car. Yes, they would. And they will treat you very nicely. And 
You know, something I actually do see some Phaetons driving around. People I see love them in California. Cars. Yeah, you know who's a huge Phaeton enthusiast? Who? Jack Baruth owned two of them. Well, that, and Mr. Sylvester Stallone as well owned two Phaetons. Well, then that's that's where episode has to end. I vote VW Phaeton as the best as the best twelve cylinder car. Yes. Used twelve cylinder. Yes. I agree. Best cheap twelve cylinder car you can buy. V12 Phaeton. Follow us in all those places we already told you to follow us, especially me at the Smoking Tire. Two straight men talking about cars. Just two straight men talking about cars. Our body's rich with faraway <laughs> spices. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>